Okay, so now we have question three, and there's a uh, text um, at the beginning, and again, this text is before any of the subsequent like question parts. So thinking about uh, keywords, thinking about uh, key sort of key information in this text, it starts with esters, and we know that we've done um, a whole topic. Um, called, well, we've done a topic called carboxylic acids and derivatives of which esters were a part. So this question is clearly going to feature esters. And these are used as raw materials in the production of soaps and biodiesel. So that's the other two key parts. So really, I think that's the only information they're giving us. So essentially, this whole question now is going to feature esters and soaps and biodiesel. OK, so part A. So a student prepared an ester by two different methods. So they give us method one, which is an alcohol and an acid anhydride. And they give us method two, which is an alcohol and um, acyl chloride. And for the purpose of our run through, uh, I think it's going to be helpful if we complete these equations. So um, an alcohol plus acid anhydride. Well, of course, we're making an ester because anyway, the questions told us a student prepared an ester by two different methods. Um, so in both cases, they're going to make an ester. But of course, what's going to be different about them is what the second product is. And this is a sort of a, a this is a, a sort of knowledge recall. You know, it is important to remember the different uh, possible reactions to make an ester. Um, you've got three. You've got an alcohol and a carboxylic acid. You've got an alcohol and an acid anhydride. You've got an alcohol, alcohol sorry, and an acyl chloride. All of them make an ester, but the second product um, differs in each one. So with a carboxylic acid, you've got a, the second product will be a water. With an acid anhydride, it's going to be a carboxylic acid. And then with um, an acyl chloride, it's going to be hydrogen chloride. And these other products are important or could be important. We don't know exactly what the rest of the question um, asks us, but it's quite possible that um, these might feature. So then we get to a subpart of this question. So um, an ester was prepared using method one by reacting, and then they give us an alcohol. And this is an interesting one because this is a branched alcohol uh, with um, the acid anhydride. And then it asks us to write an equation for this reaction and give the UPAC name of the ester formed. So it's not difficult to write uh, the start of the reaction equation because we have our two reactants and we know it's an alcohol and an acid anhydride so I can write my CH3 there's two and then CHOH and then uh, I'm reacting this with the um, acid anhydride okay and then I know that I'm going to make the ester and I'm going to make um, the carboxylic acid and the carboxylic acid this is ethanoic anhydride because it's CH3CO so it's two carbons so eth so it's the ethanoic anhydride. So I know that my carboxylic acid product is going to be, um, uh, sorry, it's going to be uh, ethanoic acid. But actually, the tricky bit here is the ester, especially as we have this branched alcohol. So to help me do it, to help me work this out, I'm going to look at the reaction, uh, and I'm going to think of it using skeletal formulae. So uh, my ethanoic anhydride. Um, is going to look like that in terms of skeletal formulae. So if I'm thinking about the uh, CH3CO bit there, uh, then that is that there. Okay, and that, there's two of them. And then the O that follows is what sort of links them. It's like the bridge or whatever. Um, then I've got uh, the alcohol. So I am going to, what's the best way of doing this? I think that actually is the best way of doing this. So uh, there's my alcohol. Now, um, we know that makes the ester. Um, so we're going to go like that. And I'm going to, we know it. the H comes off. Uh, that's one of the things that's lost. So, and it's easier, I find, to draw the alcohol part of an ester on the right hand side. So, that's going to be the alcohol part of the ester. And then um, we have got to attach to that um, 
uh, the CH3CO. So uh, that is going to be, whoops, I'm not sure how clear that is. Let me just move that down. Um, so maybe if I just, uh, perhaps I should just bring um, another color in. So um, what can I use to differentiate? Use the blue. So this is our alcohol and this is our alcohol part of the ester. And then this is the uh, acid anhydride part. Uh, and then we would get it as our second product, uh, the carboxylic acid, which is going to be ethanoic acid. Okay. So we've got to think about how to, uh, how to write that ester. Um, so I'm going to write it underneath. So that is clearly CH3CO. And then, of course, because it's an ester group, you've got to have the second O because it what makes how you can identify an ester from the condensed structural formula is the COO. Um, and then we've got a CH, and then we've got CH three two. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, that gives me my CH three COO CH CH three. Two, uh, and then of course my carboxylic acid, CH three, and then it's going to be ethanoic acid as I've drawn. So great, fantastic. And then it asks me for uh, the UPAC name of the ester. All right. So remember, the second part of the ester name is the uh, the bit with the carboxyl or uh, yeah, with the um, yeah, the carboxyl group, the C, well, the C double bond O, the carbonyl group. Sorry. Uh, so uh, it's that's clearly a thanoate, because if you look at the yellow, it's two carbons. And we we have the second part of the ester name. The bit with the uh, carbonyl group is um, O eight at the end, and then we have to think about how we're naming um, the ester. So our longest chain. Uh, but we've got to do it with the alcohol, you see. So we're doing it from the oxygen. So the longest chain is two carbons. So that's ethyl, but it has a methyl group off it. Off it, so it's going to be methyl, ethyl, ethanoate. So let's try and make that a little bit clearer uh, as to why that is. So we have to count. Just going to zoom in. We have to count from the oxygen, and we're doing a straight change. So that's one, two. And so then we have a methyl group <clears throat> coming off it. Okay, hopefully that was uh, okay and clear. All right, moving on. Uh, the same ester was prepared by using or by reacting, and then we've got the same alcohol again with, and this time we've got the acyl chloride. Okay, so it's asked us to outline a mechanism. So we have to think of what mechanism did we do in the carboxylic acids and derivatives topic. Uh, well, we did nucleophilic addition and elimination. Um, what feature or what, what was being attacked? Well, it was the uh, carbonyl group. We've only done the mechanism with acyl chlorides. Um, so it's going to be our acyl chloride that's attacked. So let's draw our acyl chloride and it's just ethanol chloride. So it's CH3. And then we got our C double bond O, and then Cl. So our nucleophile is is the um, is the alcohol, and it's going to be the lone pair on the oxygen of the OH group. So uh, we've got CH three, and then there's two of them. So we're just writing it underneath. I think it just makes it easier to just write them underneath. And we know this is going to be acting as the nucleophile because and a nucleophile is a, an electron per donor. And so that's going to attack the delta positive carbon. And then uh, the pi electrons move on to the oxygen. So then we have an intermediate. Uh, we've got to recognize that that oxygen is now going to have an overall negative charge. We have to show the electrons that we have, the pair of electrons that we've moved onto it. We've still got that Cl. Uh, and then if we go down what joined to the carbon, it was the oxygen. 
Uh, that still has the hydrogen attached to it and it has the other part of the alcohol group still attached to it. Uh, this is an oxygen with um, three bonds, so that's going to have a positive charge. And that's fine because even though we've got a minus and a positive charge, if you think about what the overall charge is, it's it's neutral because the plus and the minus will cancel out. And remember, every equation must be balanced, not just in terms of number of atoms, but also in terms of charge. Uh, and then our next stage is that uh, the pair of electrons that are on the negative oxygen move back, uh, reforming the carbon uh, oxygen double bond. The chlorine leaves and we lose a proton. So the uh, um, electrons in the oxygen hydrogen covalent bond both move on to the oxygen restoring the second lone pair. And that is our mechanism. And for the purpose of completing the equation, I mean that's what we've got done there is enough for the marks. But for the purpose of completing the equation, uh, we should, because it doesn't do us any harm, oops, sorry, and there we go. Okay, next question. So now we're, so the ester shown uh, occurs in vegetable oils, uh, and now we've come to the bit where we're talking about the soap. Um, so it can be hydrolyzed to make soap, and it can also be used to produce biodiesel. And write an equation for the reaction of this ester with sodium hydroxide to form the soap. So we're going to be making the, uh, making the soap first of all. Okay, so again, um, it's important to, to, or it's useful, to remember a uh, like a general equation. So um, this structure that we're given at the, right at the beginning of this question, this is a triglyceride. Right, so it's a we've got three ester groups, or sorry, we've got e three ester chains um, joined together, and our reaction to make soap is we get a triglyceride. We react it with sodium hydroxide and we make, um, well, we always get uh, glycerol and we always get uh, in this one our uh, fatty acid salts. And um, this is a, this is basically um, a hydrolysis reaction. So we, if you think about um, the equation involving with a, uh, involving alcohol and carboxylic acid to make an ester, we so it's alcohol plus carboxylic acid goes to ester uh, plus water. That is an equilibrium reaction. So it means it goes in both directions. So the forward reaction, the reaction to make the ester, is called a condensation reaction. But the backwards reaction, where the ester um, splits and becomes the alcohol and carboxylic acid again, is called hydrolysis. And this is an example, or this is a, an application of the hydrolysis uh, reaction. And in hydrolysis, we are breaking, uh, we're breaking the ester apart, and we're breaking it between the carbonyl group and um, the oxygen. So we are breaking the molecule apart between the two oxygens in the ester group. And that's what we're doing here. Now we're, do, we're breaking three bonds. So that means we need three sodium hydroxides. So this is a molar ratio. Uh, if we break uh, the bond there, then what we would have, if we simply just drew what we've broken, uh, would be sorry, would be this, but of course, what we're actually making is the alcohol. So we put our H's and this is the glycerol. And this will be made in every time you see a reaction with a triglyceride, you will always, always, always get that glycerol structure that um, that triol. And then we make the fatty acid salts. And one thing that we've something we've just got to be watch out for is we've just got to look at the ends of the chains. 
see if they're the same, see if they're different. Uh, they are all different, so we have got to write those uh, each of those molecules separately. So we've got C17, H31, and then we're making uh, the carboxylate salt. And we have to do it for each one of them, C17, H33. And then the last one, C17, H29. So they all had the same number of carbons, but they did have different numbers of hydrogens. So some of them have double bonds and so on. Okay. All right. Then the next part asks us to give the formula of the biodiesel molecule with the highest MR that can be produced by the reaction of this ester with methanol. So the difference between our biodiesel molecule and these fatty acid salts is that instead of the Na, instead of that sodium, we would instead have a methyl group. So we would have CH3 at the end instead of Na. And we've got to have the one with the highest MR. Well, that's they've all got the same number of carbons. They're all going to have the same number of oxygens and they're all going to have, yeah. So the only difference, sorry, between them is the number of hydrogens. We've got 31, we've got 33, we've got 29. And clearly the one with 33 is going to have the highest MR. So C17, H33. Uh, Biodiesel is a methyl ester. So sorry, that's the key thing that you had to remember. And it does say with methanol. All right, let's just uh, highlight that. So it says with methanol. So we're basically making a new ester. Um, and so we just have CH3 at the end. And that's our biodiesel. Okay, that's a methyl ester. And that is our, oops, and that is our biodiesel. So that, uh, that finishes that uh, walkthrough, question walkthrough. If you've got any queries, um, just let me know. Thank you.